Hi guys, it's Julia Papworth with Waiver Wire Wins for Win Daily for week 16 of the NFL fantasy season. You can find me on social media. I am at Julia Papworth. All right, guys, so if you are considering looking at the waiver wire this week, that probably means that you either had a buy in week one of the NFL fantasy playoffs or you won your matchup. Great. Congratulations. Either way, you are two wins away from a fantasy football championship. So let's look and see what options are on the waiver wire this week. These are people that you might start. You might not. You might be picking them up just to sort of block your opponent from getting from getting them. So make sure before you hit the waiver wire to look and see what your opponent might need. Do they need a quarterback? Then maybe if you have space on your roster, pick up a quarterback so they have less options. Okay, starting with quarterback, Baker Mayfield. He is only 54% rostered. He had a really great game this week. He went 22 for 28. He had almost 400 yards, 381 yards passing, and four touchdowns. They have a great matchup next week. They play Jacksonville, who has given up the fourth most fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks. Another option is Derek Carr, 218 yards, three touchdowns, 23 for 28 this week. And that was without Chris Olave. So if he gets Chris Olave back next week, I think he probably will. That could go up number wise. They play at Los Angeles with the Rams next week, and they have allowed the eighth most fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks. Finally, the classic streamer this season, it feels like Gardner Minshew. He is 25% rostered, and he had three touchdowns, 215 passing yards, 18 for 28. Seems like every quarterback on the waiver wire had 28 attempts this week. Um, they are playing Atlanta next week, who has allowed the ninth most fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks. You have to throw on Atlanta. Atlanta is very good against the run, so I see the Colts throwing all over the place. He is definitely somebody else you can consider streaming or picking up to uh, make sure that your opponent cannot get them. Ty Chandler, 52% rostered for the Vikings. A lot of people maybe ran and picked him up if they were the Alexander Madison owner last week. Hopefully you did that, or if you saw your opponent had Madison, you went and picked up Ty Chandler. But he's still available in 48% of leagues. He basically ran the show this weekend for Minnesota. He had 23 carries, which was all but one of the running back carries. 132 yards with a touchdown. He also had three receptions for 25 receiving yards. Uh, Madison was inactive with an ankle. Uh, he sprained it last week, and we don't know if he's going to be back next week. Um, high ankle sprains, if that is what it is, usually it's about two to three weeks. We don't know if it's a high ankle sprain. We don't know if it's a low ankle sprain. We don't know what it is. But even if Madison does return, I think Ty Chandler is still a running back that you should have on your roster. I don't know if you're going to start him, but you should have him on your roster and you don't want your opponent to have him. Because if Madison does not go, he is a starting running back. That's the thing. There are not that many of those in NFL. So make sure to look for Ty Chandler on the waiver wire. One other person to look for, Trey Sermon. He is a Colts running back. He's not rostered at all, really. 0-1% rostered. Uh, we also Zach Moss get injured. I think he's probably going to be okay, but you have to monitor that. And if Moss is out, we still don't know what the Jonathan Taylor situation is. So you got to keep your eye on Trey Sermon. If you have a deep enough bench to stash him and you're either the Moss or the Jonathan Taylor owner, I highly recommend grabbing him, putting him on your bench, and just having him there just in case. Because if there's a world where Taylor and Moss are out, it is not the best matchup against Atlanta next week. Like I was saying earlier, you have to throw on Atlanta. They've given the set, they, they allow the second fewest fantasy points to opposing running backs. But again, if he is the starting running back for a NFL team, he has to be on the roster. Couple wide receivers to look at, Tyler Boyd. Cincinnati. He is 49% rostered. We all saw Jamar Chase leave the game with a shoulder injury and he did not return. So we kind of don't know what's happening there. Uh, Boyd had two receptions for 53 yards and he had five targets. Look, we all know that Tyler Boyd is better when Jamar Chase is out. That's it. Higgins kind of moves up to the number one. Boyd moves up to the number two and that's the way it goes. Um, Jake Browning, he is serviceable. 
as their quarterback. So I think Tyler Boyd deserves a look, especially if you need someone. The other wide receiver I would consider this week is Noah Brown. He is 40% rostered. We've been talking about Noah Brown for a while. Um, people were picking him up. You may have dropped him. He had two gooses the last couple weeks. Uh, but this week, Nico Collins was out. Collins was trending towards not being out. He had like a lengthy warm up before the game. And then he said, no, I'm not playing. So Noah Brown kind of slid into that wide receiver one position. He went eight for 11, 82 yards and a touchdown. And that was with CJ Stroud on the bench. So that was with Case Keenum. So next week, let's say Stroud comes back from his concussion protocol, which is looking like he probably will. You don't know what's going to happen with Collins. It was a calf injury, which I think is something that kind of depends on the player, right? Like, it's clear he went out, he warmed up, and he wasn't feeling it. So I could imagine a world where Collins misses another week. I could see him going. Either way, I think Brown has played himself to a little more playing time. And if Stroud is on the field, I think we could see similar numbers or at least close to similar numbers for Noah Brown. So he's someone to look at. All right, let's close out with a tight end option. I told you I don't have as many for you this week. Um, I would suggest Darren Waller. Darren Waller came back after a few weeks of injury. He was out and we definitely missed him. He is 64% rostered. A lot of you guys were able to stash him on your IR, so congratulations. He just went four for six, 40 yards, classic tight end line. Um, and it's Tommy DeVito, but look, Tommy DeVito, he's been good. He's been bad. He had a rough game this week, but he, we have seen some good things um, out of Mr. DeVito. And I think he's going to go to Darren Waller. I think the real startable options on the Giants offense are Darren Waller, Saquon Barkley. That's what you got. It's kind of that and exit out. So if you are in desperate need of a tight end, next week they are at Philly, which is a pretty good matchup for tight ends. Take a look at Darren Waller. Hopefully you are... At the point, if you have made it this far in the fantasy playoffs, you have a startable tight end. You have a tight end that you've been starting every week. So I'm very hopeful that you don't have to run to the waiver wire to pick someone up. So just to close it all out, a reminder, you are looking for backups. You are looking for people with potential to either stash on your bench to have just in case or to keep away from your opponent. Also, you can roster more than one defense at this point. You can roster more than one kicker at this point. It's it's all in. It's all in. And if you are not going to start a player on your team, drop them. That's it. This is it. We're almost there, guys. Two more wins, and you've got yourself a fantasy championship. That was Waiver Wire wins for Win Daily for Week 16. Once again, I'm Julia. You can find me on social media at Julia Papworth. All right, guys. Good luck out there. Let's bring home some championships. We're almost there. Good luck.